Welcome to Griffin's Gaming Guides. In this video, we're going to go over every melee weapon you can acquire in La Somme in Remnant 2. La Somme can be a very nasty world as it's essentially split into two sections. You've got the Dran homeworld, which is kind of a Victorian inspired, almost Bloodborne esque type of world where you've got villagers coming at you with pitchforks, swords, and guns. You've also got some fairly hard hitting Cthulhu style special enemies, as well as a few other ones that can one hit kill you if you get caught short. And you've also got the Fey palaces, beautiful palaces that have got sprawling landscapes throughout them, as well as some of the most deadly enemies that you're going to face in. Remnant 2. Now given the fact that La Somme is such a deadly world to be in, whether you're in the Drain section or the Fae section or a little mixture of both at times, it's a good thing that there are 8 very good melee weapons you can acquire in La Somme. We're going to cover off all 8 in this video so make sure that you stick through to the end. Especially given the fact that some of the melee weapons on the SOM can only be obtained once you've followed certain steps, you are also going to find links down below the like button for how to acquire each and every weapon, but like I say, we are going to cover them all in this video as well. So let's kick things off with the Assassin's Dagger, which can be found on La Somme in the Council Chamber. However, you need to be in the mirrored version. So once you come to the Council Chamber biome, you want to make your way all the way through where you're going to find a kind of ominous looking mirror. Go through the mirror. You're then going to have to take out one of the Cthulhu style enemies, as well as a ton of armored Fae. This can be fairly difficult. Make sure that you go back through one of the doorways where you're going to create your own kill box to filter them through. Take them down as they come through and just try and pick them off one by one. You will have a much easier time of it. Once you've done so, you then need to walk up to where the council members are normally sitting. If you look through the water, you're going to be able to see them. And then remove the three seals from the pedestals where the council members would normally sit. You're then need to going to place them from left to right going blue, which is High Councillor Savan's key, red, which is High Councillor Honoril's key, and purple, which is High Councillor Niall's key. That will then unlock the door above you where you can go into the One True King's throne room. Mantle up to the right, jump across to the small ledge, jump back across to the back of his skull where you can pull the Assassin's Dagger out. However, that won't actually be the equipable Assassin's Dagger. To obtain that, you then need to take the Assassin's Dagger over to Nimue, who will be in Nimue's retreat. You're then gonna be able to exchange the Assassin's Dagger for the Assassin's Dagger, which you can then equip and go off and use it, and it is a very useful weapon, especially if you're good at backstabbing and inflicting bleed damage. This thing can just rip enemies apart. Now, like I say, this thing is incredibly good at inflicting bleed damage, mainly due to its baked-in ability called Bloodthirst, where damage increases by 25% against bleeding enemies and 25% when attacking from behind. Charge attacks deal 214 bleeding damage over 10 seconds. It doesn't have a mutator, but just stick a mutator on that aids bleed damage. There are quite a few of them in the game, and this thing will just annihilate enemies, especially if you go up against a special, or maybe even some of the bosses that you can get, or an aberration. Get behind them, quick charge attack, they're going to bleed out before they really know what's going on. Also, if you do come across the Red Prince in the Gilded Chambers on La Somme, take him down using the Assassin's Dagger. You don't need to do a charge attack or inflict bleed damage or anything. Just simply make sure that the last attack comes from the Assassin's Dagger. You're then going to be able to take the crown off his head. Next up, we've got the Bone Chopper, which can be found in La Somme in the Great Hall, which can be a bit of a difficult biome to get a spawn. It will be able to spawn from either starting point. However, if you do manage to find the Great Hall in Morrow Parish, make sure that you keep the Ravenous Medallion that I'm going to talk about in a tick. Make sure you keep hold of that, as you can use it to obtain one of the best pistols in the game, the Rune Pistol. If you manage to find the Great Hall from the Palace Courtyard starting point, feel free, go and get yourself a bone chopper. I only say that because the Great Hall from Morrow Parish took me 32 times before it appeared, so hopefully you'll have better luck than me. If you do find it from Morrow Parish, just make sure you keep hold of it. You could save yourself potentially hours and hours of work. 
But anyway, getting back to the Bone Chopper melee weapon. Once you get to the Great Hall biome, follow the linear path around, take the elevator down, then come back through and around the corridors. You need to take the stairs up to the right at the end of the corridor, then go behind the ovens where you can find the Ravenous Medallion. Take the Ravenous Medallion back to the start of the Great Hall biome where you can use the lift or open the door and use the other lift. Then, once you're fully geared and prepared for a very difficult fight, place the Ravenous Medallion in the slot in the doors to open the way to the Great Feast. Now that you're in with the feast, you can have a chat with old Tubbs who's sitting on the other side of the table. Make sure that you have a chat with him and then eat some of the food where you will contract the ravenous status, which will cause you to become sick when using relics. So ensure that you either have the handler, summoner, or both archetypes if you manage to get them. Summoner obviously being obtainable over on Yasha. Equipped which will greatly increase your chances of survival as you will have an army of specials and fey to take down with essentially one health bar, which can be a serious challenge. Now, thank you to someone in the comments. I can't remember what your name was. I'm going to have a look at it once I've done the audio and I'll put your name on screen because apparently there's a way of eating some of the enemies. I think you do just go up to them and attack them. You're going to see some NPCs standing around with a green health bar. Go up and either interact or attack them where apparently they give you health back. I didn't know that at the time of writing the original guide and putting the Bone Chopper video up. We've got a dedicated video for every melee weapon, like I said earlier. I wasn't aware of that during the initial guide. However, thank you very much to whoever you were, this guy right here, for letting me and the community know. Now, this fight would be a run of the mill if it were for the fact that you were able to heal normally, which will see many players back at the checkpoint more often than not. So make sure that you eat the NPCs, as well as having some very heavy hitting gear around you, which will help you take the enemies down quicker. Then once the rune covered executioner appears, take it down as quickly as you can as if it grabs hold of you, even the challenger archetype won't be able to get you back up from what he does to you. Now with the Great Feast conquered, speak with Tubbs again, then go down the left service elevator, take out the executioner waiting for you, where you can finally collect the bone chopper from the counter to your right. Now for me, the bone chopper melee weapon is a very good one to put some resources into as it hits hard and it hits fast. I've mentioned that a couple of the other guys that we've put up for Remnant 2. If a weapon can't prove itself at level one, I'm not going to put any resources into it. The Bone Chopper definitely, for me at least, has potential as it does a very nice kind of triple attack. You can do a charge back step that kind of swings around twice. Any charge attack will hit twice. So it's a very good one for increasing your DPS compared to some of the other melee weapons that you can get in Remnant 2. <laughs> Next up we've got the Dreamcatcher, which can be one of the most difficult weapons to acquire on the Somme, and it can only be found in the Tormented Asylum. However, there are a fair few steps that you're going to need to go through. Now, to start off with, you need to make your way through from the Murrow Parish starting point. You then need to go to the Asylum, kill the Ripsaw Aberration out in the courtyard, obtain the third floor key, and then take out the Fey Ambush on the third floor, where you can jump out of the open window in the room with the large hole in the floor out onto the balcony and collect the prison cell key. From there, you then need to head all the way back down into the cells, which you passed on your way to going out and getting the third floor key, and interact with the final cell on the left as you approach the courtyard. Open the locked door after speaking with the NPC, who won't actually be there when you open the door, allowing you to collect the Night Weaver statue from the middle of the cell. You will need this later. So from here, head through to Nimue from the third floor of the asylum and ask to be sent to the hunting grounds, which you need to traverse through all the way to the tormented asylum, where you're going to be taking down either the Red Prince or Magister Dulon along the way. They're just two bosses that you need to take down, where afterwards you can then acquire the Soul Key tribute from the corpse the Nightweave was feeding on, and then make your way back through the portal that she escaped through back to the asylum. You then need to open the door, take out the nurses and the bulbous creatures down in the cells. You can then, once you're down with the cells at the bottom of the staircase, interact with the kind of blue spider's web that's all over the back wall. You can then use the sulky tribute on the web to then be able to get yourself over to the Tormented Asylum, which is the Nightweaver's biome. 
Now, fortunately, you won't need to fight the Night Weaver in order to obtain the Dreamcatcher, as what you need to do instead is go into the first cell on your left. You're then going to be able to exchange the Night Weaver doll that we collected earlier from the cell that we opened up for the Dreamcatcher melee weapon. Now, the Dreamcatcher has a good couple of uses in Remnant 2. First of all, you can use it to acquire the Crescent Moon long gun over with Nimue just by attacking her bracelet. Link below the like button for that one as well, as well as how to take down the Night Weaver if that's what you need to do. Now, what makes the Dreamcatcher melee weapon so powerful and effective in combat is its baked in ability called Dream Wave, where after dealing 250 points of damage, which is only three or four attacks, a charged attack will release a dream wave, flowing outwards 20 meters and then returning to the caster, which is obviously you. Dream wave applies slow to all enemies for 10 seconds and grants a stack of reverie for each enemy affected. Each stack grants plus 2% to all damage and plus 2% movement speed, which lasts for 15 seconds. So just to put that into perspective for you, if you've got one enemy, you're going to hit 2% harder and move 2% quicker, whilst they've been dramatically slowed down. If, however, you've got a group of enemies around you, on say Yasha and the Rood, the Somme, the Labyrinth, anywhere you might be, most of the time in Remnant 2 you're going to be surrounded by enemies. Send a Dream Wave out, and say just for example you've got 8 enemies in front of you, you're then going to be hitting 16% harder, you're going to be moving 16% faster, they're all going to be slowed down, so you're essentially going to turn yourself into like a little tornado of death just by activating Dreamwave. And given the fact that you can activate this thing just by dealing a simple 250 points of damage, there should be no reason whatsoever why you can't always have the enemy slowed. This is one of the best, most effective tactical melee weapons in the entirety of Remnant 2. And it is probably one that I'd recommend upgrading near enough above all else as the Dreamwave ability it's just so effective it doesn't matter whether they're trying to reload it'll take them five times longer if they're trying to attack you if they're trying to just simply jump up a ledge or drop off a platform whatever they're doing it's all like they've just put in put in slow motion whilst you have been sped up so you're going to be essentially turning yourself into like a little sonic the hedgehog for them incredibly fast whilst they are just turning themselves into snails. It's an incredibly powerful weapon, this one. Not for the physical damage, but for the ability it gives you. Next up, we'll take a look at the incredibly powerful God Splitter melee weapon, which is essentially a solid great sword. Now, you can acquire this one once you've taken down Fey Rin, who is a world boss from the Palace Courtyard starting point and can be found in the Malefic Gallery. Killing him will then give you the Melded Hilt. You can take that over to Macabre in Ward 13, along with 7 Luminite Crystal and 1,000 Scrap, and then craft yourself a God Splitter. Now, the God Splitter itself is not just kind of powerful in name it is incredibly useful at taking down any larger enemies if you just go through the mobs it will carve through them like a knife through butter it won't really even think about what it's doing there but where this thing comes in so powerful if you go up against an aberration a special a boss even if you manage to do a charged attack every subsequent attack with the god splitter then becomes a critical hit so if you've got someone like, say, Gorge, for example, the aberration that you can fight over in La Somme in the Butcher's Quarter, it's a very tight arena. If you whip the Godsplitter out, do a charge attack, every other attack will be a crit. So even if you're only hitting him from behind, it's still going to be doing a significant amount more damage than what it ordinarily would do. Now for me, if Feyrin is the first boss that you've gone and taken down in La Somme, if it was your first world, then definitely make sure that you pump some resources into the God Splitter, as it's certainly going to be a lot more powerful than anything that you would have received at the start of the game. However, 
If you do have something better, then maybe only put this one in if you've got resources to spare, just to either have a play about with or see how you get on with it. But for me, middle of the road kind of weapon, there are much better ones out there. But like I say, if you haven't got anything better at the time of watching this video, then pump your resources into it. Make sure that you can output more damage. It might just save your life. Beware, creature, little mouse. Yeah. Curiosity stays my hand a moment. You're back. All right, then. Next up we've got the Huntress Spear, which you can acquire on La Somme in either the Forsaken Quarter or Ironborough. Now I say it's in either or, as you're going to be randomly ambushed by a boss called the Huntress. She will ambush you one to two times as you make your way through a biome as you're trying to get to the Briella's Garden checkpoint, which will then mean that you're very close to her location. Now you will find the Huntress asleep in one of the large buildings just over the way from Briella's Garden checkpoint. Wake her up just by simply shooting her, go up and give her a kick, whatever you need to do. Just initiate the boss fight, then once you've taken her down, you're then going to get the venerated spearhead, which you can take over to Macabre in Ward 13, along with 7 Luminite Crystal 1000 Scrap, and you can craft the Huntress Spear. Now the Huntress Spear has a very nice ability, as it's a long range melee weapon. Let me explain. If you hold down the charge button, you essentially take a couple of seconds to throw the spear kind of up on your shoulder, in your hand, and then you can launch it, and this thing can go a very good distance. And from the testing I've done with the weapon, it doesn't seem to lose power. Some games will kind of, if you throw a weapon really, really far, it will lose a bit of oomph on the way. This one, however, it will hit just as hard, whether it's a point blank throw, or whether they're the other end of a biome, and you get lucky with a decent shot. However, as good as the weapon is, it can be a very tricky one to get to grips with, as for me at least, I use a lot of charge attacks in my playthrough, as they tend to hit harder, but for this one, kind of retraining my brain that every time you want to do a charge attack, even if it's a back step, you're then going to take a couple of seconds out from what you're doing to put the thing up on your shoulder, allowing you to throw it, it can be a little bit kind of disjointed, but if you become very proficient at using the Huntress Spear, you could be pretty much unstoppable, as if the enemies can't get near you for the most part, they can't hurt you. And a lot of the time, you can just throw, reload, throw, reload, even though it's a spear. It also hits very, very hard when you're up close just by using normal attacks. This could definitely be one, if it's one of your first starting weapons, like I said earlier on about the God Splitter. If this is one that you've acquired early on, pump some resources into it, make sure that you get it leveled up. Or, if you're just struggling with some of the harder enemies to take down, or you'd rather stay away from people, this is probably one of the only long-range weapons in Remnant 2. Do what you need to do with it. Next up, we'll go over one of the toughest melee weapons to acquire in Remnant 2, Nightshade, which can only be acquired by killing the Nightweaver in a very specific, difficult way on a Somme in the Tormented Asylum, accessible from the Morrow Parish starting point. So like I say, you need to have Morrow Parish as your starting point on La Somme, then make your way through the biomes, taking down all the bosses and enemies, until you collect the Soul Key Tribute, which can be found just after taking down either the Red Prince or Magister Delon, Collect it and then go back through to the asylum. Go down and use the Soul Key Tribute on the blue web. That will then allow you to transport yourself through to the Tormented Asylum. 
rest at the checkpoint and then equip your hardest hitting gear and then get rid of any support archetypes like the summoner or the handler or the engineer which you can acquire over on the road anything that kind of has someone to assist you get rid of it as if you screw up on this one it will be a restart in adventure mode all the way back at the start of Mora Parish, you're going to have to go through and try it again. Now what makes this so difficult is every so often, out in the courtyard, the Nightweaver will open her chest up, dropping a few spiders out, but it will also reveal her heart. What you need to do is unload your most powerful abilities into her chest when it's open and destroy her heart, which will then take her from a physical Nightweaver into a spectral Nightweaver. Now, you're only going to see a difference on the Nightweaver herself. Her name won't change or anything like that, so keep an eye, but it is fairly easy to tell. She basically goes kind of a turquoise colour, and she looks a lot more ghostly than she would do ordinarily. Now, you need to keep her in her spectral form, not only out in the courtyard, but also in the asylum as well. If she grabs hold of you in any way, she can attack you, that's absolutely fine. But if she grabs you, she will straight away go back to her physical form where you will then either need to die, you will need to let her kill you, which is why I said get rid of all supportive archetypes as they will still attack the Nightweaver. If she grabs you and she's only got a little sliver of health left and then say your dog goes off and kills her or your summoned allies or the engineer's turret, anything kills her, it's all the way back to Mora Parish for you. So make sure that you keep her in a spectral form. Do not let this thing grab hold of you. If she grabs hold of you by a wall, you're dead anyway. But if she grabs hold of you anywhere else, either in the asylum or the courtyard, she will then return to her physical form. And it doesn't matter how many times she opens up her chest cavity, you won't be able to turn her spectral again. Once you have killed her in her spectral form, you will then, and only then, obtain the Night Weaver's Finger, which you can take over to Macabre at Ward 13, along with 7 Luminite Crystal and 1000 Scrap, and then craft the Nightshade Melee Weapon. But I'm not, over I'm not exaggerating the point. This is an incredibly difficult melee weapon to obtain in Remnant 2. However, the Nightshade melee weapon is worth the effort, for me anyway, as it has a baked in ability called Beyond the Veil. Neutral Evade turns to Mist, granting Nightshade 5% base damage as lifesteal for 5 seconds, and a perfect dodge doubles duration. So what that means is, every time you evade, you leave a little bit of fog behind. If the enemy goes through that and you then attack them, you're then going to get 5% of the base damage straight back on your health bar. So if you're dealing 300 points of damage to an enemy that's just touched the mist, you're then going to get 15 points of damage straight back on your health bar. If you're only dealing 100, you're only going to get 5 points. But what makes this so good, if you've got a mob of enemies in front of you, if they all go through the mist and you manage to hit all of them at once, which given the effectiveness and the speed and the kind of range that these claws have, will be very easy to do you can just shred through enemies at the same time as healing yourself as long as you kind of dodge attack dodge attack you're then going to create essentially a never-ending stream of mist and then a never-ending stream of healing now don't worry too much if you can't take her down in a spectral form as the nightshade as good as it is there's no trophies or achievements linked in to actually unlocking the nightshade melee weapon this is one for the collectors and the more hardcore players if you want to go off and collect everything that's how to obtain nightshade if you can do it fantastic if you can't do it don't stress Kill him. <laughs>
Next up, we have one of the longest melee weapons to acquire, and I don't mean length, I mean process. You can only obtain the All Night Blade by accusing the right council member on the SOM in the council chamber biome, and it can be a bit of a difficult one to get, as if you get the accusation wrong, all three members of the council will attack you and more than likely kill you, as they're very hard hitting. They also inflict curse as well, and we all love a bit of curse. So allow me to talk you through quick what you need to do. You need to go all the way through the council chamber biome to a mirror. You need to go through the mirror, take out all of the enemies in the local area. You then need to go to the council chamber seats, pull all the kind of seals out. If you've already got the assassin's dagger earlier on, you're basically going to be following the same steps for that. However, you won't be exchanging the assassin's dagger with Nimue this time. You need to keep hold of it and then look at the pommel of the blade. Which if you're not all clued up on your kind of blade craft, the pommel is the opposite bit to the pointy bit. Look on the very base of the blade in your inventory. Spin the dagger around where you're going to find one of three seals. There'll be a symbol on the base of the dagger, which then relates to a council member. You need to go after the council member, who will then, once you've run through the dialogue, reveal each of their symbols on screen. That will then link you, the dagger, to that council member, Make sure that you either take a picture of it on your phone or take a good mental note of what it is. They're fairly, they're fairly different, so it shouldn't be that difficult to figure out what one you need. Once you've done so and you've gone through all the specific dialogue, again, there's a full guide down below for how to obtain the All Night Blade. Obviously, this is more of a run over to see what you need to do. Just kind of a quick overview. But once you do accuse the correct council member, whoever it might be, it's completely random every time you run through, the other two will then assassinate either him or her. You will then receive the Ornate Blade as thanks for helping them find the traitor. Now the Ornate Blade, it's it's a, it's a decent weapon, but it's not going to bring you any bells and whistles or fireworks. It's essentially a long sword that hits fast and it hits fairly hard. Is it worth all of the effort that you need to run through, the potential mistakes that you can make along the way, and the time investment? For me, no, it's not. However, if you're a collector, or if you want to go off and make your own guides, then it's definitely one that you need to get, because that's what we do. Now, I think one of the things that lets the Ornate Blade down more than anything is that it doesn't have a baked-in ability. So, whilst it looks nice, yes, it's got a nice little curve to it, but whoop de do without a baked-in ability to kind of increase its efficiency in combat, it's a sword. You know, you can get one over from Brabus in Ward 13. That's a sword. Without an ability to kind of boost this thing's efficiency up, it's it's low end to mid at best. If you want to chuck some resources into it, feel free. However, for me, this thing's staying at level one. <laughs> And finally, on the Somme, we're going to have a look at the Ornate Flail, which you can acquire from the Council Chamber biome. Go around where you're going to find a fair few kind of charred, stuck-in-time corpses in front of a bored-looking statue. Just over to the right, there's going to be a painting kind of pressed up against the wall. Smash through it, you're then going to be able to go down into the basement. You are going to need to take down the Executioner Aberration, which can be a very tough fight. Again, link below the like button for what you need to do for that one. Hopefully, once you've taken him down, you won't have that many difficulties going through. There are a few enemies in the special as well, but at this point in the game, you should be fairly, equipped, fairly well equipped for taking them down. Now, as you make your way through, you're going to come to a cavern. Just over to the right will be a room that's absolutely full of these kind of charred, stuck-in-time corpses. Smash through all of them and then look over to the corpse that's up on a platform just in front of you. Make sure that you shoot them out of the way, allowing you to jump up. You can then drop down behind the kind of stalactite rocks. You're then going to be able to go up to the altar and equip the ornate flail. Now, the All Night Flail is it's a bit of a weird weapon. You can kind of spin it around your head a few times, which can do significant damage. However, it does drain your stamina off. It also has a kind of very powerful hitting attacks as well. But exactly the same problem with the Ornate Blade. There's something with Ornate weapons in this game, as for whatever reason, they don't come with any baked-in abilities. So whilst, yes, it does hit hard, it's a beautifully crafted weapon. There's some serious workmanship gone into this. If you're a fan of kind of forged weapons or anything like that, you can certainly appreciate the aesthetics that have gone into it. However, it's not really one to level up, as, like I said for the Ornate Blade earlier on, there's no baked-in abilities. There's nothing to increase this thing's damage with 
say bleeding or shock or acid or anything else it's just it's a weapon you can get pretty much the exact same flail over at Brabus in Ward 13 with a lot less hassle no executioner to take down you can just go and buy the damn thing it doesn't hit as hard but it still hits pretty much the same very similar move set so it's one of them if you're a collector or like i said earlier on if you want to make your own guides feel free give me a shout out in your video that'll do for me i'm happy with that but actually pumping resources into it i'd probably just slide this one off but anyway, that was a look at all eight melee weapons that you can acquire in Le Somme in Remnant 2. I do hope that this video has helped you out. If it has, let me know down in the comments which one you've already got, which one you're not going to be bothering with, if you've leveled all of them up, or if you're just not bothering with Le Somme whatsoever because you don't like the look of the area, or you've been through Cotton's Kiln and thought, fuck that, I'm not going there again. But of course, whatever you decide is completely your choice as to what you do in the game, as is whether or not you want to click the like button or not, which we really would appreciate if you could do so. Amazing. Either way, though, please take care of yourselves out there. Enjoy the rest of your week, and I do look forward to seeing you back here at Griffin's Gaming Guides.